Uh, who's, who's laughing? All in due time. Welcome to the Jacob Wayne Show. I am your Jacob Wayne, and with me at two for the price of one is huh? the lovely, sexy, totally pinchable Kellen Givens. How you doing, buddy? Doing well. Yep. I nice. uh, got the PC back running running fast. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's nice. Is been that been a bit of a it. process? How long has it been like Actually, that? it's been yeah my laptop has been my main thing for like a couple of years now it's just been so far out of my mind <laughs> yeah and i finally some guy popped up on facebook it was like hey new computer repair shop in town and he had a lot mm. of good reviews and stuff and guaranteed his work and stuff and he did it for really cheap he did really good there so, you go mm -hmm. well congratulations on that uh what are you sipping on in celebration Ooh. I got the good old yerba mate, uh, rebel berry. Yep. So they have these at the gas station. Had to stop and get some lunch, and the, mm -hmm. that looked good. I like the yerba. Is that supposed to be energizing? Not too much. I think it's like a little bit, but yeah, I've never all that, gotten all that stuff. Doesn't work on me really. The closest yeah. is coffee. And yep. I think it's just like a quick, warm little jolt. Like it's more like a warm liquid that wakes me up yeah. more than anything. And you know, nah, that's not true. Sometimes I can get coffee and it's like a little jittery. So clearly it's doing uh -huh. something. But in terms of yeah. like energy, no, like I'm not like, hey, suddenly ready to go. Like uh, I'm just like, Bleh. now I'm sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still tired. Now I'm cozy and tired. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. It uh it all depends on how much I've eaten too. So <laughs> sure, that's an element. So but I'm sipping on Highlander Grog. Corey Ooh. came down and visited, as was mentioned in my last very tired podcast that was only like 20 something minutes. That's volume one of Eakin One Out. Eakin One Out. Just, uh, just something. We've so all been there. Yeah, it was a long trip to Utah. Then Corey came and jammed for a bit. Mm -hmm. And then a couple days, like one day actually. And then jumped right into work. So I was like, I was like all right, record one real quick. Yeah. So my main point is that Corey, God bless that man. He's like, oh yeah, I brought you Highlander Grog. I was like, this guy knows me. <laughs> like hot sauces and highlander grogs and it's like that's really it's really all you need i don't have any food stuff to go over at least as far as top of my head goes but, so all yeah, i will say in that coffee. regard is that for me like christmas presents and all that stuff that's really the approach get me a gift card for some food or a store or buy me like some really great spices Ooh. things that you know you don't really think about buying very often but it's just good to like stock up uh-huh and i'll eat it and then it'll be gone because i'm i try to be pretty minimalist and so when people get me things like another pair of clothing or like another mug like i'm thankful but at the same time it's just i, I got a mug i have pants like and then i'm yeah. always trying to reduce those down uh-huh so i'm like just get me like delicious pepper 
that I will use <laughs> and it'll go away. But I don't know. Yeah. How do you feel? No, that makes sense. I think that's a good I think that's a good gift. I don't You're see probably not as minimalist as me though. Well, maybe not as, but I do agree with you. Yeah. I have enough mugs now. I don't need more mugs. Yeah. But okay. yeah, I've just so many years living out of a backpack and a couple trash bags mm-hmm. of books. It's like, yeah, I don't need that. And now that you say that, I I have a bunch of your stuff that you're like, hey, you should keep this. So yeah. Oh, we still gotta <laughs> take a look at some of that stuff. I know some of it you do want back. I know. Yeah. Well, it's not so much. It's just like, <laughs> are you using this? And then I'd take a look and be like, oh holy shit, yeah, I do want that. Yeah. A lot of them are just like cool little trinkets, like the right. Karma Sutra ball. Yeah, I forgot about the Karma Sutra ball. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to give me that back in a Kama Sutra position. All right. Number 73. Ooh. And if we can pull that off, then the transition will work. All right. I got about two more years of Pilates. Yes. (laughs) And uh, anyway, you got any food stuff? We'll just move right along. Hmm. Let's see. uh, I think I already talked about this. uh this gas station uh, place with the bakery and the Mexican food. I've just been eating there some more. And That was in Smithville, Utah? No, it's actually uh, the Foothill gas station, like right by our house, one you oh. used to walk to. We all both used right, to walk to right. that one. It's got an awesome restaurant in it now. It's it's awesome. So I've been getting some stuff from there. They have the uh, like kind of Southwest egg rolls with the mm. jalapeno jelly. Ooh. Okay. They're not a big fan yeah. of jalapeno jelly, but I, I appreciate its existence. Or, I kind of like jelly and jalapenos separate, but I don't know why. I think it's a well, I, I, I agree. Like, I never thought that would be something I would dip like an egg roll in, but oh man, yeah. it's, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm willing to be turned around on it. Yeah, I would try it. I, I, I was uh, suspicious but they have yeah. free samples and i was like oh my god okay that's good <laughs> yeah it's kind of similar to like jalapeno beer i'm like wow that's really interesting and then all right i'm done yeah i don't like that as much yeah uh two things first what is that other restaurant out in smithfield now you mentioned one didn't you the la unica la unica that's also that's, mexican food yeah that's oh, okay. that place is really good yeah all righty that's a full and... menu place have I told the Hawaiian punch story about that particular uh, gas station on the podcast before? I don't think so. All right. It's, it's my one little go-to story. You know, it's like sometimes somebody mentions a place and you're like, ah, I got a story about that place. Uh-huh. But then you kind of forget who you told it to. And it's not that interesting. It's very childish, really. But as you said, when we were young, we used to ride our bikes up to that gas station and or walk and just get a giant thing of soda and some candy, chips, whatever. Uh-huh. And it was kind of a A, pass the time when you had a day off, B, just kind of hang out, get sweets, do whatever. So me and my buddy Steve Cook, we would go up there and get our little like penny candies and chips and whatever and be like, all right, sit at that table area. And there's okay, it's time to go. And we would get a Hawaiian punch along with just our soda we actually wanted. (laughs) And then we would get Hawaiian punch and, you know, maybe sip a little. Yeah, that's good. But as we would uh, walk, like be walking, we take a swig. And for those that don't know, Hawaiian punch, I don't see it around as much, but it's bright red. Yeah, and all this stuff and so when cars would drive by and this is logan utah mind you this isn't the city where people are just like oh, who gives a fuck like it's oh they were looking at you concerned old people like what are they doing on a saturday sundays tomorrow what? and <laughs> we take big swigs of uh hawaiian punch and then we pretend to punch each other in the gut and just Whoa! And just uh-huh. like spit red everywhere just oh, God, oh! And just like nice. people would like slow down and like go, oh, uh, oh god damn kids. Oh, good Gosh job. darn kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good memories. Damn. 
later on they brought out all the other flavors they were always vibrant any one of them like there's a bright green one and a bright yellow one they all would have been like i'll be fun to spit out yeah that's true <laughs> yeah i bet you like probably one of the parents walking by or driving by was just like what the hell is even that <laughs> yep, freaking out they pull over start yelling at you and you're all like <laughs> Daddy, chill. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, my buddy's just standing off to the side. <laughs> you know uh, where that's from yet? No, I can't. <laughs> I, could, I feel like I've heard it, but I can't pick it up yet. All right. Well, I'm not I'll telling keep, you yet. I know. Keep well, over here a few more times. We'll tell me at the end of the episode, please. <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll find out once we get to the segment that's oh, relevant, too. Gotcha. Oh, I feel you. Um, so, with that, I guess that covers the food and sips and all that. Uh, Want to do music? Yeah. We need a good little music drop. Not like a song, just like a little. YMH already has a cool guy riff, like, yeah. so can't really, hmm. something kind of like what that. What if it wasn't music? Let's do some like Yoko Ono screaming. <laughs> yeah. Let's record like yourself it. screaming like eight different Now I'll get a little bit, we'll just, we'll sample suck some Yoko Ono. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard the dude who does like the prog rock? guitar over the top of her uh, like it's it actually makes yoko make more sense yeah because it's like oh no oh, yeah like she kind of works in that weird melt banana avant-garde metal kind of way yeah huh but interesting yeah i'll have to find it and send it to you Is it, it's like the not the dude that does like just random videos too Is it? it's like a different guy i don't know i mean there's a few of those guys out there I would uh, play it on the podcast, but I don't know if there's any kind of issue with that. Do you know? Uh-uh. I'm not sure. Let's research that, and then we'll play it next week if there's no issue. Because if at the end of the day, we're just promoting that guy. Yeah. And it's not like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't it work would be for Warner owner. Brothers or Virgin Records or anything like that. Yoko would send us a letter being like, oh, no, you didn't. Well, see, that's the that's what's interesting, right? Is he did all this metal over the top of Yoko, which I would imagine the Yoko uh-huh. footage has got to be a little more copyrighted than him. Yeah. So then, if we just listen to him doing that, and I think we'll just do the audio. We won't even show the video. So yeah. is that an issue? I well, because audio... we're legitimate commentators too, uh-huh. we're allowed to comment on news It'll... of the day. It might be a length thing. If you play it for like 15 seconds, we could get away with it. It might be something like that. Well, let's like different. Well, we'll research it. Let's do our research. <laughs> I know we can get a tiny little clip for the soundboard at the very least. Yeah. But uh, with that being said, any music news well, stuff uh, coming Highline. up on your front? Yeah. Okay. Um, Highline Drifters spent the last. Uh, Saturday and Sunday in the studio. So I will make this drift. jug disappear. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a good, jolly good time down at Y Sound and lay down a good, healthy chunk of the new record. So how many be songs coming. is that going to be? I'm not sure how many complete we haven't really decided but i think we recorded six or seven that will like definitely be on it we recorded a few more too that might we might use might not just wanted to try them out just for fun so mm. yeah yeah <laughs> um cool well we finally we had a couple of bands fall out on our gamma Paw show on april 1st the emporium sports oh. bar here in fort collins uh, but we've got another one. We got the Bad Roommates joining us. They're huh. like a really fun punk band around here. And I'm still learning their names and all a little bit of the other information. But their they're lead singer, guitar player guy, like he's just one of those dudes that has has it. He has it. He has it. 
Oh. He's uh, just got charisma, like, spilling out of him. And he's just kind of, like, kind of got that weird, bizarre kind of punky energy, but, like, just super entertaining. Nice. And, like, you could almost, like, watch him talk for, like, two, three minutes of just kind of stuff bubbling off the top of his head. And it's like, hell yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm nice. excited to play with them. And uh, if you haven't heard them, I think they're on Spotify and all that stuff. So the Bad Roommates, check them out. Yeah. And uh, as far as Gamma Pod goes, we're on track to release a single this Friday. Yep, yep, this Friday on Bandcamp Day. And then it'll be up on all the streaming stuff a little later. But that song is Slow Dracula. And we're going to have a little tiny intro piece called Fast Dracula that leads into it. That's actually slower than Slow Dracula. It's kind of like the Iceland Greenland thing. Uh huh. Greenland's icy, Iceland's green. Yep. But uh, yeah, with that, I am also working on getting some bass and vocals recorded for a Fakoshka track. Yeah. We'll so more there. on that in the future. NP. China. China. Yep. Huge China. I I added a little kind of a faster, punkier part on the heavy, heavy breakdown at the end. Oh Lord, yeah. Should not affect you too much. But with that being nice. said, new releases. Uh, the only one on my radar is Tears for Fears finally released a new album after all these years. Ooh. And nice. it's called The Tipping Point. I think I had mentioned that when that single came out, but the whole full album is officially out now. It's 10 tracks. Uh, I have not nice. fully digested it yet. You can definitely tell that they're older gentlemen. Uh -huh. If you look them up, they're getting up there, and you can oh, hear yeah. it in their voice. They're, you know, they're they're older. It's kind of in a weird way, like it sounds like Tears for Fears, for sure. But it's uh, kind of reminds me of that David Bowie record right before he passed away. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Where you can just tell he's an old guy, but it's like kind of got like some new twists on things and uh -huh. hopefully that's not the case with Tears for Fears. I want them to stick around and do more, but uh as far as I understand from their history, like they split up as a duo and maybe even released a Tears for Fears record that was only one of them. But then one went off and did solo records and so it's been a minute, but uh the yeah. i'm still digesting the record as i said but it's it's very tasty well produced mellow pop music that has a lot of 80s influence and a couple new influences but as of right now my favorite track off of the record is the first track it starts with some acoustic guitar nice and simple it's called no small thing and uh yeah only other detail i can think is that on the tipping point uh it has like some lyric like who's that what's that shape dancing on my wall or something and he's like talking about his wife who passed away oh like, kind of like just feeling her presence and oh well, you know that i couldn't love you more and he's like talking to a ghost in the room i was like that's kind of Damn. yeah there you go it's sad but it's just perfect 80s kind of like that kind of sad romantic thing yeah new wave music i guess so yeah indeed wow that's cool yeah oh yeah so i did a one quick music note um wait i mentioned it to you last night uh the one of the ending credit songs from a righteous gemstones episode had this like metal metal band with a woman's mm. choir right uh so yeah. i looked them up the brides of lucifer and the song in the show is oh father oh satan oh son uh which is a sweet name for 
a song gotta be it. so yeah. i checked out the rest of the album and uh, they are pretty cool but uh, you know when you when i when you think about doing like a choir with a metal band you mm-hmm. immediately like think like it's could be like clunky in some ways if you it's do it be wrong. a little bit of like the demi borgir however you well, say their name yeah but see they use the choir how it can be used as kind of like a pad but when they're trying to like sing the words yeah it's like weird so like one dude screaming like i'm going to crush you or whatever the weird lyrics are you know it's like okay cool but when it's like Mm -hmm. a beautiful woman's choir being like i'm going to crush you it's just Mm -hmm. like huh (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's just like it loses it some of that but it's still really cool i definitely recommend listening to it but i think the coolest song on the album is that one from the show and that one uses the choir more like a choir like dmu would instead of trying to replace the singer as much yeah no yeah that makes sense so would you say that the album is a recommend oh yeah definitely there we go (laughs) um hell yeah check that out that being said, that transi- transitions us pretty well. Um, another mm-hmm. thing that we were discussing last night is I got to look up the name of that song. Uh, so there's this weird song also at the end of Righteous Gemstones, which is the show we're going to get into here. Like just always, um, always a good song. Yeah. Like the whole soundtrack is just pretty solid. Absolutely. And uh, so anyway, like there, there is one at the end called Gonna Rock My Boy's Body. And it, it's sung, sung by a guy. Uh-huh. And so I wouldn't, I just like, oh, this must be some kind of interesting track they picked out from wherever. But apparently Edie Patterson, who plays Judy on the show, my favorite character, uh-huh. like she wrote the song. So then I went and found it on YouTube. I learned that from, a, I think it was a Vulture article interview with her oh yeah and uh yeah so i like looked it up and it has like the subtitles and it's like oh okay yeah that totally makes sense that she wrote that but uh one other little interesting tidbit about her is that she talked about something that i've mentioned before where the relationship of like horror movies and comedy movies are like just really close to each other like they both kind of pull a visceral reaction out of you and like set you kind of off kilter a little bit and Mm -hmm. that yeah your your mind and physical reaction to horror and comedy is like really not that far off so she mentioned that she wants and then she grew up watching a bunch of horror movies with her father or stepfather I'm still trying to remember off the top of my head but she wants to write and direct a horror movie someday well, nice. and i'm like i'm all for that like edie patterson the one who played judy and the weird teacher and vice principals that i can't remember the name of like uh-huh. a horror movie by her would just be incredible oh, so yeah. that'd be awesome i really hope that comes to fruition but uh that song one more time if you want to get a sense of her musical lyric writing anyway is gonna rock my boy's body righteous gemstones season two episode four end credits Mm -hmm. and she also wrote the butterfly song on the in the new season oh when she's singing during uh bj's baptism yeah so uh where are you at in the show have you finished it i got the last episode to watch gonna watch that tonight okay well real soon this will kind of jumble up what i was thinking but that's fine it'll still work i was gonna see if you were finished and then just up to this point what has been your favorite or some of your favorite lines from the show now that it's completed it's two seasons third season's coming Oh. oh man i i i need to like watch it through a few more times to be able to like remember concrete lines there's just Mm -hmm. so many of them but i do think that the still that first season near the end the the outback steakhouse scene and Mm -hmm. the the the, you save that piss for my chest save that that piss for my chest (laughs) yeah that just got me so hard 
Uh, good. Yeah. yeah, that one's uh, yeah, too funny. Remembering anything from season two? Oh man, some of the Keith lines were hilarious. The uh, when he's like, when uh, he calls him daddy, and he's like, "We're not doing that." <laughs> mm. But daddy, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're you're right. I pushed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's. I'll do a couple real quick. There's uh, when Kelvin's arguing with Eli about his muscle men, muscle boys he's like you do whatever the hell you want with your muscle boys and he's like they're muscle men daddy <laughs> and uh bj talking about rollerblading is like it's what i do to stay swole <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh <laughs> slapping buttholes and sucking dicks <laughs> yeah and the my Judy. favorite line from the last episode <laughs> is, Judy, there's nothing I would love more than banging your played out mother pussy for the rest of my days. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited and, to watch it. Uh, just, <sighs> yeah, there's just a delicious little scene of, um, I forget her name. Is it, what's the aunt's name that's pregnant? Oh, um. I mean, I believe in me too. She's become like a favorite this season. Yeah, she's really And good. Uh, there is a bit of spoilers attached to that. So all I'm going to say is that she has kind of like an awesome moment. And then it goes to BJ and Judy. And then they just have like much shorter than the Outback Steakhouse scene, but just a nice little BJ Judy exchange that's just nice. like, that's, that's what I live for in that show. Yeah. So yep. like, Every character is great, of course, but like Judy, BJ, and Aunt Tiff, Aunt Tiffany. Yeah, that's right. It's just like I love, st- I love stove soup, nieces. Thank you. <laughs> or like Baby Billy talking about her being a turd baby. Uh, it was like, but it wasn't a turd. It was me. Uh, <laughs> just like, oh my god. Uh, so anyway, Righteous Gemstones, if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's like the funniest comedy I think I've watched in years. It's oh, not yeah. for everybody. It's a, definitely its own particular style, but if oh, you like man. filthy, dirty, bizarre, kind of horrific comedy, yep. yeah, you'll like it. You'll like it. So with that, let's uh, get into movies real quick um have you watched any of those oscar movies oh shit (laughs) oh i I predicted in the last episode it's like i bet you he has not watched Uh, one of them (laughs) which all i'm gonna say is that this year i could totally understand because (laughs) i talked about power of the dog fucking boring uh, Dune is still my favorite to win. It won't win, but I could see people if they're not into it saying that's a long, boring movie. Yeah. And now I have watched another one from the list. I think I watched. No, yeah, those were the two I told you to watch. But this is the third one that I've tried called Nightmare Alley by uh-huh. Guillermo del Toro. Oh. And holy shit. Is this a boring fucking movie? It's like <laughs> one of the most beautiful looking movies. Like if you know Guillermo del Toro, he does Hellboy and Shape of Water, and he he always is like visually immaculate and incredible. But after watching this movie in like four different sittings, because I just couldn't sit through it, uh-huh. it's like a neo noir, but it's kind of a noir kind of not and it's it's just so fucking boring like i don't give a fuck about any of these characters every line of dialogue doesn't mean shit to me but it's beautiful yeah. it's a beautiful looking film and it's acted well <laughs> so it's just like okay people will love this i can appreciate that it's a good movie but for me i'm like i don't give a fuck and then i started thinking about guillermo del toro movies Mm-hmm. I don't really like his movies that much. Though there's one movie that stands out amongst all of them 
that I love, which is Pan's Labyrinth. Have you seen that? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a great fucking movie. And so I can't, I think they talked about it on ONA back in the day when they were discussing actors like Samuel L. Jackson. Like he did Pulp Fiction. So then he gets 10 years of just doing shit before uh-huh. you're like, I don't think Samuel L. Jackson is very good anymore. Or like he gets 10 years to just get away with whatever he wants because, well, he did Pulp Fiction. So he's he's a great actor. Yeah. That's the same thing with directors. It's like I watch Pan's Labyrinth and I'm like, well, like Guillermo del Toro, he's one of the best. He's amazing. But as I yeah. went back and looked at his <laughs> movies, he's like he did Pacific Rim and Hellboy. And I'm like, no, I think he's kind of a cornball. Yeah. And as I said to my buddy Mike, who was a guest on the show, he loves Guillermo. And so I apologize, yeah. Mike, but it's he kind of pointed out to me, he's like, Well, you gotta listen to him talking about Nightmare Alley to like kind of see all the themes, and then the whole thing comes together in the last two minutes. And I'm like, I am not wasting almost three hours of my life for two minutes of <laughs> oh, well, that's what all that boring shit was. Great. See- Tarantino does that too, but the the whole thing's exciting, and the last two minutes are like mind blowing. <laughs> well, and I'll break that down a little further. Say, so yeah, you take uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's not a lot of heightened action. It's a lot of hanging out, but it's intriguing and fun. And it's like I'm even intrigued by, yeah, why is she going to this movie to like watch herself in her own movie? Like I'm invested just because of the way the flow of the editing and the way the characters are interacting is just more entertaining than this Mm -hmm. Guillermo del Toro. And, but to go back to that little bit is it's just like, well, that's the thing is I, I do love hearing Guillermo talk about film and movies. Like he does have a really interesting relationship to it and his perspective on symbolism and all that. But I, I think that's what I even posted to Mike, it was all public, so I'm not saying tall tales out of class. Uh-huh. I was just like, I think I'd rather listen to Guillermo talk about movies than actually watch his movies. Uh huh. Whereas, yeah, Tarantino as an example, um, I like listening to him talk about movies, and I like watching his movies. So yeah. there's kind of the big difference. But uh, I For wanted sure. to read two reviews about Nightmare Alley from Letterbox, which I've I want to keep keep that up because I, I kind of like doing the little shout out. Yeah. Um, here's a review by Matt Lynch. He gave the movie two stars. I think I had to give the movie three stars just out of respect for the craft it took to make it. I just take the two off because of how fucking boring of a plot and story it is. Ah. Uh. But uh, yeah, it's very well made. I will say that. But Matt Lynch says, I remain almost completely allergic to the very pretty and profoundly boring work of Guillermo del Toro. (laughs) Which, man, talk about summing up what I just said. Uh, (laughs) But I'll read one that was three stars. This is by Diamond Lily Kiss Smooch. Like, kiss smoochy lips. It's an emoji. She puts... William Defoe looked like he was having fun. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I like seeing William Defoe have fun. Yeah, that's that's fun. Um, I am not seeing a five star review on this. I was right. trying to find one just to balance things out. Well, Did you look this for is... mics. <laughs> it would be a five. <laughs> the best neo noir in years. <laughs> sorry mike uh four star review i guess it's as good as we're gonna get this is by karsten um surprisingly riveting the rise is just as thrilling as the fall and that's all i really needed out of this to feel satisfied should have never doubted gdt guillermo del toro um oh. sorry you're just wrong surprisingly riveting Like, even if you're more into the story, riveting? Sure you're using that? (laughs) I think that word means what you think it means. 
It's like the little things on your pants that you. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, that is not a recommend for me. So now I got to watch another one for next week. But I'm running out of the ones that are available on streaming, so we'll see what I can uh, pull off. But so far this year, Best Picture noms, I'm like, it's got to be Dune. It's long and boring sci-fi for some, but I guess it's a matter of what plot and genre engages you. I, I guess I don't like neo-noir. Um, I don't like westerns. So, don't like Power of the Dog. Um... You should watch. I don't know, man. Oh. I'll let you know what to watch because we've already okay. gone over Power of the Dog and Nightmare Alley and Dune. I think we've talked about extensively. Yeah. You should still watch Dune, though. I know. I, I want to watch it just to see what it's about. So. But uh, yeah. Anyway, before moving into our last segment, I will say that this. <laughs> Still don't know where it's from? Nope. (laughs) It is from season two, episode one of Righteous Gemstones. When he comes home, when Eli, as a young man, comes home to dinner with his family, he's like, where where you been out doing what, boy? And then he's just like, I've been nothing doing nothing, daddy. And then his sister... (laughs) 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 Just... Her face holding completely still, just slack jaw, just <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, our boy Corey says, like, you need to put that in the show. There you go. He's like, put that on your little use, soundboard. Use that. You put that on your little soundboard, nah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there it is. That's our new addition to the soundboard. Damn. And with that, anything else you want to go over before getting into this day in history? Well, I'm ready for that one, I think. All righty. Let's uh, get to it. All right. Well, the big news. This mm-hmm. day in 1872, Yellowstone was established as the first national park. Hell yeah. That's some hot stuff right there. We should go up there sometime. It's been since uh, eighth grade. Yeah, did you do the overnight trip? Mm -hmm. Stay in them little cabins and stuff? Yep. That was a good time. I had a lot of fun on that. (laughs) That's where I bought the shirt. I had a naked fisherman. And he's like naked except for his rubbers. And then just on the back of the shirt, it says, let me get my rubbers on. Hell yeah. And I bought that at the store and was wearing it around to much acclaim from the students and not so much acclaim from the the teachers teachers yeah. and then i also went back to that store and as a joke tried to buy a bunch of bananas and condoms and just buy buy them both and just like straight face yeah, yeah that's all i need uh, a little eighth grade kid yeah i i, I kind of went out of my way to be kind of a, uh, <laughs> a little shithead on that trip no but, that's really yeah. Oh yeah, it's really really fun. I like I like it up there, especially if you go on the off season. It gets sounds like it's really crazy nowadays, so you gotta go on the right time. But yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. Amazing so we stuff. should definitely do that. Anyway. Fun trip. All right. All right. Uh, let's see, two thousand five. Uh the US Supreme Court ruled it was unconstitutional to execute convicts under the age of eighteen. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah yeah and then, then sad sad news 1994 justin bieber was born six 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 the mark of the beast yes indeed yes okay <laughs> let's yeah. see 61 jfk made the peace corps china <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see way back 1936 the hoover dam was completed i like the hoover dam i'm a fan i'm cuban b yes cuban b <laughs> we found a spot 
Thanks. <laughs> no, it's still a bit iffy. Let's see. Protesters in Seoul launched the March 1st movement, a series of demonstrations for Korean national independence from Japan. Lord knows I have. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, but Korean and, independence from Japan, that's probably Imperial Japan, right? Let's see, 1919? Yeah, well, yeah. shit. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll move along. Well, the last one is Frederick Chopin, uh, or known as Fred Chopin, as most people, uh, was born. Famous pianist. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Probably he's a lot of people's favorite piano composer. Hell yeah. I what's his most famous one? I well, he wrote don't know he my wrote a bunch of too well. Well, he wrote a bunch of etudes for the piano. Like each one is like emphasizing a certain technique and takes it like to the brink <laughs> mm -hmm. he wrote a really crazy one for the left hand and there's a really cool video of a dude playing it on pipe organ and he's playing the left hand part with his feet mm -hmm. and he's wearing like sequins and stuff i bet we watched it way back in the day probably sweet. <laughs> you can't hum a little melody for me though uh let's see that one like, da -da 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 -da. like da -da -da -da. da 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 Something well, it's like, like uh, Claire de Lune. You could do that. That's not him, right? No. I don't actually know that one that well, though. That's oh. one I never really. I know uh, the Beethoven's like dun, yeah. dun, 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 ding ding ding. <laughs> I guess it is kind of hard to do those. Yeah, classical totally. melodies are tricky. Anyway, do the do re mi, Chopin. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, with that, I think we're uh, wrapping things up. Um, I think I'm going to go like, you know. Naughty! Naughty jungle of love! <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Yeah, with that, really it's been after, real. Yeah. Indeed. Oh, I, I will. Back I'll, to uh, the mines. Indeed. But uh, talk to you soon. Um, yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about a new game I'm playing, but we'll save that for next time. Sounds but, good. Uh, anyway, till next time. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Jacob Wayne Show. If you would like to contact us, please write us at fakoshka at gmail.com. That is F-A-K-O-S-H-K-A at gmail.com. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. Simply search The Jacob Wayne Show and it should pop right up. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave a review and share this podcast with your friends. Please write us. It helps add content to the show and makes the show even better for you, the listener. Thanks for tuning in.